How's it going everybody? I'm Jesse from Black Lab Outdoors and on this week's video we're going to be working on the custom screen door with an extra large pet door specifically for my English lab and my uh, lab mix. I already got the lumber broke down. Um, it's going to be a pretty much pretty simple screen door. It, the lumber is one and a half is one inches thick and then it's I think it's two inches wide here. Just under, it's an inch and seven eighths. So we got an inch thick, yep, just over, it's like an inch and a 30 second. And an inch and seven eighths wide. Um, the basic construction is, of it is we're gonna have two styles on the side and then three rails. So we'll have our two longer pieces or styles, and then we'll have a rail going across the top, a rail going above this door, the doggy door, and one going below it. And I'll either do the sides of the doggy door with, I have some tongue and groove um, boards like this on the wall. I have some left over, something like that, or plexiglass. Um, I'm not really sure yet. I'll have to look at the prices of plexiglass. I have the, I have the tongue and groove, so that's, you know, that's been bought and paid for for a long time. I think that stuff was like 40 cents or less a foot. So it's, it was, it was very cheap. So do you want to see how it goes together? Stick around and yeah, stick around, watch the video. I appreciate it. Um, if you want to see any else I'm coming up with, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video if you don't mind. Thanks. So this is where we're at in the build. We have, I put the bottom rail and the mid rail, which is the, which is the top of the, well, sorry, this is the top of it, the top, the top of the dog door rail. And that's the bottom rail. It's gonna be at the bottom, bottom of the door. So put in some dominoes. In a couple different places here one here here in the middle one here same on the other end it was uh first first time using the domino i got the is it the df 500 q and i like it it worked really good i'm really happy with it um I didn't buy it new. I bought it used uh, at an auction. I got the the joiner and everything, and then I also got the other. I got the case of the dominoes, the whatever the sustainer that comes with all the bunch of different domino, dominoes, and then like seven. I think like seven cutter heads or something like that. So but can't exactly remember how much I paid for it. I uh, at the time I probably paid too much of it, but um today I was looking at getting some new cutters not that these ones haven't been working but they do look I mean they're it's ever it's all used so I just wanted to see what the pricing of everything was and really looking uh, 
I, I saw one, the the big the bigger joiner, the 750 or whatever. I saw that one of those on eBay, and they were like two thousand dollars. So probably have probably have like I said probably at the time I probably paid too much for. I mean, it was one auction for both of those, so I probably. Uh, probably at the time I might have paid too much, but the way everything is with the pricing right now, I probably ended up getting a good deal. So, anyway, like I said, this is where we're at. I got the top rail, the furthermost rail. Already cut over there. Oh boy, that's nice and square. That's bowed a little bit, but we'll get it pulled back in. It's in there nice. I got Well, that sucks, and that was stupid. I thought these were way long when I cut them, but apparently not. And I just made this one an inch and a half too short. So... Some stuff moved around. It's all right. It's all right. I dropped a couple things. It's got a little twist in it, but hopefully we can. make it serviceable. on these 90 degree squares in the corners and a bigger glue up like this 
just because that way I can make double sure that while it's gluing up, it's going to glue up square. Because there's no sense in doing all this stuff and having something get all wonky on you. Another thing I like doing is I like using uh, Type Bond 3 with this stuff because it's got a longer it's got a longer open time even though it's got a, a longer cure time I'll take that with the have, take that over not having you know I'd rather have rather take a little bit longer for the the glue to set up so I can have a little bit longer opening time because I mean it you're going from here, here, and all the way down there, one side, getting your getting your tenons in, and then going on to the other side, trying to get it clamped together, and still looking good. Now it's a, the next day. Um, we'll let this sit, this glue up sit overnight. So next we're going to, well we're going to get out of the clamps here, and then I'm going to set it aside. Well, we'll take some quick measurements in here because we'll work on filling in this side here, and I'm just going to do that with wood. And uh, I got some six inch one by six uh, tongue and groove that I'm going to use for that part of it. Of course, I got all that crap in the way over there, too. So I want to apologize real quick. Yesterday, I got into uh, a bit of a groove, and I forgot to video a bunch of this stuff of the putting the screen door together. So I'll just move it over here real quick, and I'll show you what what I got going on so I got the screen in place I end up having to make uh, a little bit more stock three quarter inch by three quarter inch that I added on around the inside of this and that way the screen would fit um, so that would be this the the second one a little bit of a mistake you know about making sure what materials you're going to use to build this like the the 
the the dog door on how that need it will only go, compress down to an inch and a quarter. It goes from two inches to an inch and a quarter. So it it's more or less built for regular doors, not necessarily screen doors. So again, that was so there was that. I should have made the entire frame out of inch and a quarter material instead of one inch, and then had to make a separate frame for the dog door at an inch and a quarter. It really doesn't take away too much from it. But again, those are my two my two little hook hiccups that I had. But I end up I got it end up nice and tight. There's no wrinkles or anything. It's got you can see it nice. It's nice and tight. So right today, what I'm going to do to finish it up until the stain and the pre-stain come is I'm going to put another piece of wood all the way around that and that way it encapsul it, it goes over top because right now the screen is just held on with several staples and then so i'm going to take another piece of trim that's probably going to be a little thicker because of the rabbit's a quarter inch so i'll probably do like a half inch so that way it sticks out above this a, a quarter of an inch to make it be twofold so it helps hold the screen in and it also be like an accent trim piece going around. And then so I also get this put up here. Uh, I also got these boards in here. These are in place. I also got the trim pieces around that hold it. This is all splushed back here. And then on the front, This is what the front looks like. I did trim all the way around. It fits right next to the, the opening. And that looks really well. I like it. So I'm going to finish this build up today. And then take it to get it installed on the, on the, on the house. So... Again, I wanted to apologize for that, for skipping over a bunch of that stuff, but this is where we're at so far, and we're going to make some trim pieces for this. Like I said, it's going to be about half inch thick, and then... an inch wide. So we'll get that stuff milled up.
another reason why I did um, half inch thickness is that way my narrow crown staples that I have, I have at least that I have on me right now. I think those are an inch. These ones are an inch too. That I, want, I wanted to make sure I didn't have any blowout. Because again, this piece is three quarters of an inch thick. And then with this trim piece, being a half inch thick, that way I can make sure I wasn't going to blow out through the side, the front. Do a little trimming. funny using that mallet with those chisels. Those chisels cost me five dollars for a set of three. They're just some cheap Stanley ones and that mallet cost you know ten times that. Well twenty times that or more.
Look, it turned out pretty well. So there you have it. I'll take some after photos after it's been installed and the stains on it and everything uh, and hung up. But I want, I just really appreciative for everybody that stops and watches my videos, that likes and comments and subscribes to the channel. I think we're up to 204, so that's pretty cool. Um, and another. I do have some, I have a new uh, helical head cutter coming from the, for the DeWalt 735X. Um, and it's not a, it's not a, what are they, it's not a Lux, it's not a Shelix. It's uh, another brand. It's cheaper. And we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to be putting together a, uh, an end grain cutting board from some scraps that run through it. Also, I have a edge grain cutting board that I need to run through it. And then I have some rough cut um, old growth pine. So it has the tighter rings. It's a little denser, a little better material. I like using it. It looks, it looks nice. That's what the majority of this is... Uh, made from is the old growth pine that has the tighter grains and everything so we'll see how it goes but that uh rough cut it um had a bunch of uh concrete that got spilled on it um, i'm assuming at one point in time it was used for walkways on scaffolding or something like that so i did the best i could with a with a metal brush on my sawzall to get it all brushed off of there i'm gonna send it through it anyway and see how it handles it so Stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in the next one.